What's up everybody, Jonathan Gauthier here. Welcome back to yet another video. Today, I wanna to talk about the five things that you should focus on as a rider or as a trainer to get your horses more broke. Guys, I just want to jump in here real quick and tell you if you want to watch the full length video series on this topic, you can uh, see this on the Comfort Zone horse training video series. If you are not subscribed to this yet, you can try it, seven days free trial. There's already a lot of content down there and we have a lot of great content in the works and being uploaded in, in, in the upcoming weeks. So I recommend you go check it out. And also stay tuned in this video uh, for the fifth element because um, it's a little bit of a bonus element. There's something special about it. So, uh, so if you don't have the time to watch it all today save it come back to it you're gonna not want to miss this bonus chapter of this video anyways back to the video so I could have titled this video many different things because I think that there are many different ways to define what is a really broke horse. But despite all of the training that to do, all of the different exercises and drills that we repeat daily, I think that it's important to have a really clear goal as to what are the fundamental elements that we expect our horses to know and to, to do consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. The same as it would be driving a car, okay? So if you, you know, if you have somebody that has some experience riding your horse and then you consider your horse broke, well, they should be able to get on and with minor adjustment to the signals, figuring out the signals, the same as they would have to adjust driving your car to, uh, as far as, as much how much pressure they need to apply to the brakes, to the gas, in order for the car to react consistently the way that they feel comfortable with and that they expect. And I think that the horse should be broke in the same similar fashion, okay? So this is why that I always keep this as a compass in my mind as to what it is that I expect out of my horses in order to keep a clear goal in my mind while doing all of those uh, different training exercises in order to optimize my horse's performance. So those five elements are starting with element number one, which is going to be the neutral. So this is going to be sort of the like teaching your horse to stand still and, and patiently wait for the next command, just like putting your car into neutral. So your horse needs to learn to just patiently stand and idle until you ask, or you ask your horse the next command. And it sounds something very silly or very simple, but again, I always find that uh, let's see, I go give a clinic and we're working on lead departures or we're working on certain maneuver, but the person has to sort of have, you know, a lot of pressure in the stirrup and a, a strong hold of, or, or a hold of the, the horse's face in order to keep them from standing. If they would just relax themselves and let their legs dangle and release the reins, the horse would probably walk off. Or I see a lot of people allowing the horses to walk off when they're getting on. And I think that to some extent you can tolerate that if you're okay with it. But I think that those are all the simple things that for me, I think it's very important to be uh, to be very uh, strict about, okay? So me, when I bring my horse in the arena, I'm gonna go to a certain place to get on. And when I do get on, I expect my horse to stand still and to stand still until I'm adjusted and I feel ready to ask him to go forward. And, uh, and the same thing goes for in between exercises and maneuvers or, or drills that you're doing. So if you ask your horse to stop and then you back up a couple steps and then you drop the reins, well, that horse should just relax and wait for the next command. And you can, you know, let them look around and it's okay, but don't let them allow them to fidget around. And so if you're not sure what to do about that, there are some exercises that you can do, such as deflections, or you can just uh, back up your horse until you, you know, you, which is what I would do if my horse kind of steps forward Forward, one step I will step in back another step or two and release but it's very important that you're able to bring your horse back into neutral and relax yourself let your legs dangle move around pet him on the butt both sides pet him on the mane go and reach up their uh, to their head and shuffle their uh, their forelock a little bit as a you know, petting them a little bit everywhere and just loosen up and teach your horse to, you know, to, to take a break between exercises, allow them to take a breath. It's really special. There's this one thing that I always, always wait and look for in my horses. And if you take the time to listen to it or feel it, you will hear it, I promise. So after, let's say after a maneuver, after a stop, or let's say you're loping around and you stop your horse and then drop your reins and wait. A few seconds after will always come this breath where this horse is gonna go. 
and take a breath. And I feel that this is the perfect indicator that tells me that the horse has assimilated what it is that we've just done or worked on and then it is ready to move on to the next step. And I think it's important to allow those horses to do that in between everything that we do. We tend to, to do things back to back and sometimes sometime in a hurry and, and, uh, and don't allow our horses to really assimilate what it is that we're working on and taking the time to really relax and take a breather. So that was element number one. Element number two is going to be steering. So steering your horses is, is something that I often define as my comfort zone, okay? And my comfort zone for me is developing control over the horse's body, the same as if we were replacing our own legs with the four legs of a horse. So I like my horses to follow my movement, follow my eyes, the same as I expect my leg to follow my movement. If I decide to go that way, I don't want to have any resistance from my own body going in that direction. So, and I expect the same thing from the horse. And this is why that I spend a lot of time looking in a direction, going there, looking in that direction, going there. And I, it's important for me, for, my, for me to have my horse really feel that, okay? So I like to look that way, which just by turning my head and looking that way, this makes my body do a certain movement okay so I want my horse to feel that and then if my horse doesn't feel that this is where the programming comes into play so then I'm going to show him how I want him to follow my body in that direction by keeping the shoulders up keeping the drive and looking in the direction we're going and I'm gonna repeat this movement until I can just look there and my horse comes with me. I look there and my horse comes with me. And I'm gonna do that at the walk and trot when I'm warming up my horses, but I'm also gonna do that at the lope when I'm circling, okay? If you have your horse pulling you in a certain area or a certain direction, because maybe that's the gate or maybe there's the barn there, so you're gonna be steering away from that area, steering away from that area. And to do that, sort of anticipating that and not reacting to the horse, like not always like, okay, the horse wants to go there, so we go up you know, the other way, reacting to where the horse wants to go. It's important to look where you want to go and just go there so that the horse feels like you're in charge. So uh, this is something that is very important to me that I will repeat. And again, I could probably go on and on and on about steering because it's a very simple thing, but yet I think there's a there's a lot of art to that. And, and uh, it's something that I encourage you to do more often when you warm up, when you ride your horses, steer and steer and steer until your horses learn to follow your body by keeping their shoulders up, staying in balance, and waiting for you to tell them where to go next. Element number three is going to be the brakes. So just like a car, if I apply some pressure on, my, on the gas pedal of my car, and I, I expect my car to react to the amount of pressure that I put on that pedal, okay? So I, I don't expect my car to just like lock in all four if I just apply light pressure. It's a little bit like when you were a kid driving a bike, going like 100 miles an hour in the driveway and slamming on the hind brakes, and it just slides. And it was a fun thing to do, it was fun. But it would not be fun if you would slam on the front brakes or all of them at the same time you probably uh, topple over the handlebars and, and crash so I think it's a little bit the same thing with horses so very important to understand that there's a chain reaction that needs to occur when signaling a horse to stop which always is initiated I think every single cue should be initiated with the seat followed by the legs and then the hands so same thing with the steering and especially the same thing with stopping. And you will find that the people who have this bad habit of using their hands a little bit too quickly when asking their horses to stop, and especially if do, they do that or they precede the, the cue coming from the seat or the legs with the hands, this is what's gonna transfer all that energy from the body of the horse into their neck and get them to tighten up because that's where they're going to put their focus. And that's not what you want. You really wanna put the focus on that hind wheel of that bicycle the same way as we, you you know, with our horses the same way as we did with our bicycles. So, uh, so it's very important to allow the horse to, to come to a stop without using, with using as, as little hand as possible and, and trying to really encourage them to feel and listen to your seat. Okay, so a very good tip for that is going to be that every time that you stop, whatever position that you, that you assumed while you stop, so sitting a little deeper on your pockets, applying a little bit of pressure with your heels down and a light contact, on the reins, well, hold this position until the horse has come to a full stop and taken one step back on their own. Then release, reward, wait for the breath that I was talking about, and then you can take a new hold of their uh, of their shoulders and and sit them a little bit more on their hock and, and encourage them to go backwards until they are pulling themselves backwards with their hind end. Which uh, which of course having a good control over the backup of your horse is going to be a very important tool to train the stop. But my 
game. Anyways, my main advice here today, as far as that goes, is going to be to always allow your horse to feel and react to your seat and not be too fast with your hands, and especially not using your hands before your seat when cueing your horse to stop. The fourth element is going to be what I consider the most important element of all is going to be the speed control. And I could have called it speed transitions because speed transitions are what is really really important in my program but it's all defined into speed control and speed control is being able to go a certain speed and maintaining that speed okay we tend to cruise around at a speed that is not quite what i call first gear it's sort of a you know lazy slow load that we like doing around and it's okay this is what warms up our horses but once we get ready to go to work and you say okay let's hit first gear well i think that you should always ride with a little bit more pace look where you're going and and always and you know be a quarter of a circle ahead of your of your horse and always have a destination in mind even if you're looking down working on your horse you should know where you are going and use your seat use your leg and ride there so that your horses feel that you are in charge and uh, but I feel that too often we go to that slow pace slope and then we say okay now we're gonna work on our faster circles or we're gonna work on our rundowns and all of a sudden we're adding speed but then the reaction that we get to the signal is a horse kind of shifting that body position that energy shifting in the body and they kind of brace or get tight and we react to that by putting them in the bridle again and getting control of uh, softening up their neck and control of their shoulder getting control of the body and, be and it becomes a you know a programmed reaction to us asking them to go faster so uh, or to increase their speed and we do expect our horses to go from 0 to 60 uh, the same as I would expect a car going from 0 to 60 but the same cars that can go from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds are able to go from 0 to 60 in 30 seconds very progressively and I think that it's and they can hold the you know 5 miles an hour or 10 miles an hour if you put the cruise control there or you keep your foot steady on the gas it's the same thing with horses so I think that you should practice you know going to to each gear and maintaining each gear so that your horse has that you know, develops that natural drive and is desensitized to that cue speeding them forward and it becomes second nature. It becomes just something that they're really good at. And you'll find that horses that tend to be a little bit forward, that you seem to always have to throttle back and, and, and hold back, will eventually, you know, become more relaxed in their movement because you're not just a passenger staying, you know, trying not to move in order to not trigger them to go faster. And, uh, and, and the same thing with lazy horses. You're just not, you know, you're not tolerating them doing that lazy lope all the time and being heavy and you're keeping them working. And so, uh, again, for both types of horses, I think it's going to be very beneficial and something that I encourage you to, uh, to work on as often as possible. So the last and final element is going to be a little bit different than the other elements. And this one, we're going to touch the interactions with your horse, okay? Interacting with your horses in a certain way that earns their respect and build their desire to, to, to come out and work with you and work for you. And this starts, this starts from your first interactions with the horse into the barn. When you go get your horse in the stall, for example, okay, we're used to having our plan for the day, our schedule for the day. Either either we have this one horse to ride and we ride it after work at five o'clock and then we're gonna ride him for an hour and then we're gonna have to be home by six to make some dinner or we train horses for a living and we have a series of 10 horses to ride. So this one's gonna be first, this one's second. And this is our decision, this is our choice. So horses have no say in when they are going to ride, but you can make them somewhat feel like they are part of the decision if for example when you open the stall door and you go get them in the stall and instead of just walking in putting the halter on and taking them to the cross ties just stand by the stall there just stand by the door with the halter in your hand they'll look at you okay they'll acknowledge that you're there and they will know that they're going to ride okay so but if you wait long enough many times and many of many horses will you know will look your way and then come your way and then once the horse makes that step towards you this is the time where you can put the halter on and take him and it seems like it's a mutual agreement of what you know you're about to go do today and this is how it should start and so this is just a higher level of horsemanship into your interactions with your horse and and this is a perfect example and whenever i feel i need to get this extra dose of horsemanship the thing that i really enjoy doing is going back to look at the videos that i recorded with uh with professional horseman warwick schiller uh there's this one video in particular that i'm going to play for you now and that is is one of my favorite videos that i've ever recorded and this is one of the greatest thing that i've ever heard coming from a 
a horseman and it's something that really fuels my my inner horsemanship uh, I should say and uh, and so if you don't know who Warwick Schiller is I encourage you to google him and find out all you can about him there hasn't been one video that he's posted out there that I haven't watched that hasn't sparked something in my in my mind in my horsemanship sense that just made me want to go out there and work with my horses and really open my mind to so much more than just the training exercise and training methods that we do on a day-to-day -day basis so anyways let's take a look at this video and I'll see you guys in a few minutes so talking about that horse at Robbins you know they couldn't figure out what it was about him so all mammals have two nervous systems okay the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic is the rest and relaxation state okay Gra uh, rest and digest they call it and then when they start to get a bit uptight that's when they're going in the sympathetic nervous system and they, they'll become, first they'll become curious. Like if a horse is out in the pasture and something drives by and they pick their head up, they're curious. But then if it scares them, then they get worried and whatever. And it gets all up to fight or flight. Okay, it's like a big pyramid. And the bottom is, it looks like the food pyramid. Resting, grazing, and then you go into the sympathetic nervous system. And so what, as reining trainers, and this is where I really learned to do it, was with the reiners, is, you know, every time you've got to keep an eye on your, what, Donnie Bricker told me years ago, keep an eye on, on the temperature gauge, you know. They start to get a bit tight, you've got to wait till they come back down again. And so reiners are very good at going, getting those horses in, during the training, going from the parasympathetic to the sympathetic, back to the parasympathetic, because they, they can't exert any energy without going into the sympathetic nervous system a little bit, okay. And so that's the, the key. There's a quote I like to use from a very famous Portuguese classical dressage trainer named Nuno Oliveira and he says your horse needs to be relaxed yet remain powerful and a lot of times people's horses are relaxed but they've got none of that or if they're powerful they've got some get up and go they've got no relaxation and you really got to try to you, you know it's like transitions you got to go from one to the other to the other to the other back and forth for a long time and eventually you get to where your horse can be relaxed and be powerful at the same time. Like you could be spinning and you'll hear them breathing while they're spinning, or running circles, I mean, breathing like that while they're, they're running circles. And so that horse of Robbins, what I finally figured out with him was, he lived in the sympathetic nervous system. He actually lived in the fight or flight zone, but there's another one up there, it's the freeze zone. He, w he basically spent his whole life basically holding his breath, like I hope this goes away. You think about when a cat chases a mouse, and that mouse runs and the cat catches it and the mouse is trying to get away and the cat grabs it again and the cat's playing with it and the mouse is trying to get away and after a while the mouse just sits there and he's looking up at the cat and you think run you silly mouse run and he doesn't run it's because he's not there anymore he's he's left the building he is mentally shut down he's like i can't get away from this and the the trauma that the, the, the worry of this big feline thing about to eat me is scaring the heck out of me so i'm just going to leave the building Okay. That horse was basically in that state all the time. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you found any value to this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed yet, please do so. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.